Choiced when I heard the people say, Let's go to the temple of the Lord. And now, at last, our feet are standing within your gates, O oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, O oh, fairest city, so strongly built as one united whole. It is there that the tribes now gather, all the tribes to worship the Lord. I rejoiced when I heard the people say, let's go to the temple of the Lord. And now, at last our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For the peace of Jerusalem, pray prosperity to all your dwelling places. Let there be peace everywhere within your ramparts. Let there be safety within your towns. I rejoiced when I heard the people say. Let's go to the temple of the Lord. And now, at last, our feet are standing within your gates, O oh, Jerusalem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with your spirit. spirit. A hearty welcome to each one of you as we complete this week once again and are waiting for tomorrow Sunday and a new week. Uh, today is an important day in the church itself because the Holy Father this evening sort of initiates uh, the World Synod of Bishops with a little uh, program I, I regret I could not go again because of the pandemic and uh, the restrictions of government, but I hope that for the next meetings I'll go. And then tomorrow he'll say a mass, and uh, which I should have concelebrated, and you know, officially begin the synod. We pray for the Holy Father, pray for the success of the synod. Uh, we ourselves in the Archdiocese of Bombay will begin, all the dioceses in the world, all, uh, will begin the following Sunday. I want to alert you already now that next Sunday, not tomorrow, next Sunday uh, will be again a Mass for my cathedral, but because it's uh, uh, Synod and a special occasion, there are only invitees for the Mass. Churches are being opened, and so we'll be begin with the a Mass with a limited congregation. The Mass will be not at 9, but at 10 on, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday the opening Mass of the Synod. Today is Saturday and so we have got intentions. Thanksgiving for blessings, graces, favors received, that they continue. For charging blessings on our family, keeping us safe. Successful renting of my flat at Nerul, the good tenant. Thanksgiving for financial favor received. Repose of souls, there are 15, for the deceased soul of Matthias, Pinto and D'Souza families. Soul of Mr. D'Souza, 2nd death anniversary, 13th October 2021, offered by his seven children. Soul of Father J.B. Mascarenus. Soul of Anthony Pinto, 25 years death anniversary, 6th October. My grandfather, Mr. Fernandez Nicholas, left for his heavenly abode on 31st August 2021. Beloved father-in-law to be, left for his heavenly abode. September 6th, 2021. First death anniversary mass for our father, Mr. Gaspar Suarez. 4th October, he, 2021, he, the anniversary, he passed away last year. Death anniversary of our father, of soul of Mr. Felix Martis, soul of my brother-in-law, 
Picardo, birthday 5th October, passed away on 29 July. My granny, Anita Fernandez, 19th anniversary, 8th October. Soul of Oscar Vaz, 3rd anniversary, 9th October. 1st anniversary of my spouse, Eric Vinod de Souza, October 9th, 2021. Soul of my brother in law, Savio Sequera, 12th October on his birthday. My great grandmother, Carobina de Souza, and souls in purgatory. For good health and spiritual well being, speedy recovery of Sister Regina Sequera in Chennai. Recovery of amputated leg, no fluctuation in diabetes levels of Mr. de Souza. Healing of vertigo, improvement in hearing, D'Souza. Spiritual, physical well-being, back pain be healed. Daughter's left leg speedy recovery, five months of surgery. We tell the family members, relatives and friends, overcoming autism of my grandson. Good job in studies for my SYBA studies exam starting from the 11th of October. For a job to the jobless, those seeking jobs. Prayer birthdays. My nephew, birthday on the 7th of October, Nilo Shetty. Daughter, Karen, birthday on the 10th of October. And finally, get my Portuguese passport as soon as possible. Pray for all these intentions. And now let's begin our Eucharistic sacrifice, asking God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Be Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds, blessed John Henry Newman, a man aflame with divine charity and outstanding for that faith that overcomes the world, grant we pray that through his intercession, we too persevering in faith and charity may merit to be sharers of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the reading. A reading from the prophet Joel. Thus says the Lord, let the nations stir themselves up and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Go in, thread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for their evil is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord rose from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth quake. But the Lord is a refuge to his people, a stronghold to the people of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain, and Jerusalem shall be holy and strangers shall never again pass through it. And in the day, the mountain shall drip sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the streams, beds of Judah shall flow with water. And a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, and the water, the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall become a desolation and Edom a desolate wilderness for the violence done to the people of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood, blood I have not avenged, 
for the Lord dwells in Zion. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All together, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Cloud and darkness surround him. Justice and right are the foundation of his throne. Our response, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the face of the Lord. Before the face of the Lord of all the earth, the skies proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. Our response, Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Light shines forth for the just one, the joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. To the memory of his holiness, give thanks. Our response, rejoice in the Lord, you just. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, as Jesus said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, in the first reading from Joel, one of the prophets of the Old Testament, and now from Monday we'll go back now, we'll come to the New Testament, St. Paul to the Romans. Uh, we've got here once again, it's the Old Testament, the context of the Old Testament. Jerusalem, they were exiled, they've come back, but yet they are uh, not fully faithful to the Lord, human nature, and therefore the prophet Joel is telling them there will be a judgment, the evil will be punished, the good will be rewarded, God is a just judge, and uh, this, even the name of the place, is, we went to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, that is, the, there's no place of that, I believe, uh, really, but it's valley of judgment. So really the place where God judges. Uh, the, the gospel passage is very short, but you know, it's got a very important meaning. Uh, they are praising, uh, there's an emotional outburst, and seeing Jesus speaking so well, so spiritually, seeing the unction he, he has, the power he has of healing. Uh, somebody is so moved that she shouts out, the crowd, woman in the crowd, blessed is the womb that bore you, blessed is your mother. Uh, really, the, it means because so she's so worthy that she uh, gave birth to you. The praises to Jesus, of course, not to Mary, but to Jesus. And Jesus says, no, blessed is rather those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is not, uh, look at it carefully, this reply of our Lord. Our Lord is not saying that Our Lady is not important or not blessed. He's saying her blessedness, when you look at it, is because she heard the word of God and kept it. In the scriptures, consistently we have that Jesus, Mary, treasured these words in her heart. She heard what the angel said, what Simeon said, uh, and uh, all these things, some pained her, some uh, gave her joy, but what the angel Gabriel said, and she kept it, and she observed the word of God. Uh, that's, so her holiness is not, and her greatness is not because she is the mother who gave birth to Jesus physically, but spiritually she was totally united to him. And therefore that's a message to us, to be united with Jesus, to hear the word of God and keep it. Do we hear the word of God? Do we love the word of God? It's 
we do not fully understand it. The Old Testament very often, we don't know the context, so we don't know what, now Joel today is a longish passage, but the context is really that they, uh, is telling them come back, listen, listen to the Lord, don't betray the Lord. So we don't fully understand. The point is to allow these words, hear them over and over again, and understand them. Today I said is a special day because of the, of the Synod, which is uh, being opened this evening, a joyful occasion, and uh, my heart is there because I wish I could have been with them, but and uh, all friends. But it's also a very special day, a coincidence, because it's also the feast of John Henry Newman, Saint John Henry Newman. Uh, two years ago, October, Holy Father canonized him, and I was present for the canonization, and I was present because. Uh, uh, I suppose being from an Indian, uh, from the Commonwealth country, uh, two or three of us, a cardinal from Canada and myself, uh, were, and the United States, I think, also was there. We went to for a little reception at, of the British Embassy, and Prince Charles was there. It was a lovely occasion, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Protestants, were there. Saint, I, I attended because I'm again an Indian, and I knew the ambassador, so I was invited for some. Uh, programs there, and I was so impressed by the life of St. John Henry Newman, so impressed by uh, the really the impact he made on the church. Read a little bit. St. John Henry Newman was a saint ahead of his times. He was born, uh, I think, in 1901 uh, or so, and uh, February, I think in February 1901, he died in uh, uh, 19, uh, no, it's uh, 1801, and he died at the uh, 1890 uh, or so, so it was the end of the century. But uh, today, October 9th, uh, 1845, is the day of his conversion to Catholicism. He was a Protestant, uh, Anglican, I presume, and he uh, was became a bishop over there, and he, uh, when you read his insights, uh, he was uh, very impressed. Uh, there were two things which really in the Catholic Church which finally made him change over and become a Catholic. One was the devotion to the Eucharist. It began with, uh, he mentions in some article I remember having read, that he, was, he couldn't believe, he was about looking from the window, a procession of the Eucharist with the Catholics were going. And uh, I, I don't remember where it was. And he says, I, I, I can't believe the devotion these people had, this seriousness, the prayerfulness. That time he, he didn't have the same faith as us in the Eucharist. Then the second thing is, as I said, uh, then I began gradually trying to read and hear, go sometimes to church, Catholic church. Then the devotion to Our Lady really impressed him very much. And he began reflecting on her role. Today's Gospel tells us, again, a theological insight into her role. And this impressed him. John Henry Newman, brothers and sisters, and our theologians would know that, uh, was influenced the Second Vatican Council very much. His writings, his readings. My own predecessor, Valerian Cardinal Gracious, was a great devotee, a great disciple of Cardinal Newman, and uh, he had uh, bought all his writings and would read and often quote John Henry Newman. Uh, after his canonization, my little acquaintance, I, I have been also trying to read about him and his writings. He's, he spoke about the people of God, spoke about how the Holy Spirit is there, the inerrancy of the people of uh, the lay faithful, much, much ahead of his times. What the Vatican Council said finally in the 19... Uh, 64, 63, he had already said a uh, hundred years before, man who, of great brilliance. Uh, let's pray to John Henry Newman. He was a convert. He, and I, I was uh, said Protestant, bishop, and then he became a Catholic, bishop, and then the Holy Father made him a cardinal. He died as, as, as a cardinal. And uh, we had Newman Institutes in, in also in the in India in Archdiocese of Bombay, and one of my students who was in Rome uh, did some special studies on John Henry Newman, and I hope that soon after the lockdown we will begin to have some institutes again remembering him and thinking of how uh, he 
led the lay faithful to really uh, make their contribution to the church. God bless you, and we pray to John Henry Newman. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice we offer you in humble and contrite hearts. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine we be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your people on the feast day of blessed John Henry Newman, that through them, according to our confident hope, we may experience the help of your loving kindness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. We right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For as on the feast day of St. John Henry Newman, you bid your church rejoice so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life you teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise without end we acclaim Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by our cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you hail us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, be your unworthy servant and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John Henry Newman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quest to our life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. To you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence of the Father in the birth Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin, safe from all distress. The way the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are, are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity. God is with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Not with the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Replenished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we pray, O Lord, our God, that what we celebrate with loving devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. 
The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master said, let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God bless each one of you. Lovely weekend. Tomorrow we'll see each other. And I want to remind you already now, following Sunday, not 9 o'clock, but 10 o'clock, the opening of the Synod in the Diocese. Tomorrow, uh, opening of the Synod in Rome, and pray for the Holy Father. And uh, John Henry Newman was a great man. Let's be like him, loving this Word of God, keeping it in our hearts. God bless. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you left